On the platform, Sean Plunkett with you through to 10 when Michael uh, takes over. It's funny, isn't it, how everything this morning in terms of our coverage is kind of coming together. And we've all seen the coverage and we're now hearing the stories of the devastation caused by Gabriel. But on a real practical level, I don't think sometimes we understand the knock-on effects of an event like this or a commercial enterprise being without power. So we're going to do a, a bit of a, a deep dive uh, now with our next guest. His name's Nick Dawson. He's a dairy farmer um, in Patoka. Uh, it's outside of, of Gisborne, which, of course, got hit bloody hard. And, well, they say the power's back, but rural areas will have to wait a while. And Nick's got 460, I think, animals. And uh, he joins us now to talk about the challenges he now faces. Nick, um, thanks for taking the time, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, hi, Sean. Yeah, good, thank you. Um, Partoka is out from Napier. Oh, no, sorry, Napier. No, I misspoke. Uh, all right. Um, firstly, in ter- physically in terms of your farm, of your property, how were you hit? Were you flooded and everything? No, so we're in the hills, very free draining, and we can take a lot of rain, but the storm um, got us by surprise because we we're so wet from previous rains. Yeah. Um, our farm's quite rolling and flat, so where it's rolling flat, it's fine, but out the back, it's taken a real hammering. It's anything with hill has slipped off mm. off the hills. Now, you're yeah. running a dairy herd, right? Yeah, we've got a 460 cow dairy herd plus a 500 hectare sheep and beef property. Okay. Which we lease. Now, how often are you milking a day? Uh, how many are we milking? How often are you, were you milking a day under n- normal circumstances? Oh, yeah, 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 twice twice a day. Yep. Okay. The power goes out, there's no way you can milk your cows, right? Yeah, yeah, not at all. Okay, and the power, is the power still out to you? Yes, and it won't be on for three weeks, I reckon. What happens so to, a, to a dairy cow that doesn't get milked? Uh, we were four days without any milking at all, but our neighbours flew in a big generator and were able to milk. Um, if they don't get milked after a week, they probably dry themselves off. Yeah. After four days, they're starting to leak milk. They're sitting down, they can bacteria into their udder and getting a thing called mastitis, which is, you know, bacteria. And yeah. that um, causes white blood cells and basically pus and probably lose that quarter. And if it turns um, gangrene, it can kill the cow. Wow. Okay. Uh. What is the status of the milk um, when you've had this interruption? Can you just go back to production, say, you know, if the tanker turns up, you can take the milk, she's all tickety-boo, or do you have to kind of, if you like, reset your head? Um, well, if you had power came on and in a, in a perfect world the tank would come back, we'd have to have our milk at uh, a somatic cell count below 400. If we go above that, we get graded, which is quite a high fine. Yeah. But in our case, the Fonterra and their wisdom have decided they'll never get a tanker up here this season. What? And told us to stop mil- stop milking, and um, so our season's finished. And as a precaution, we put an antibiotic up every teat. So we had to put eight syringes up every teat the other day. It took ten hours, which was <laughs> a bit of a mission. Yeah, but you've been told no Fonterra tanker coming to your farm to win. Well, we don't know. I'm even worried about next season because the roads are so bad. Okay, for, um, for townies uh, like me, what's the season? What does the season run, the milking season? Okay, uh, typical season starts about 1st August and finishes about mid-May. Okay. And the cows will have one and a half to two months off and they'll calve again and uh, away we go again. Yeah. So, Nick, you're rooted, aren't you? I mean, sorry to, to use the vernacular. <laughs> no, good terminology. We are, yeah, totally rooted. But... Um, Thank goodness, Fonterra have said, okay, you're a co-op. We can't get the tankers out to you. We will pay you the three-year average of your farm till the end of this season. Okay. Well, that's that's some relief. Um, yep. That, that's come to the part here. Yeah, but what do you do us. meantime? What do you do with your herd? Can you get them out of there and redistribute them to other dairy farmers or sell them or something? I mean, what, what's the plan here, Nick? No, they, they, so they're going to have a long holiday. They'll get nice and fat and we'll push some grass in front. Uh, the next problem is going to be winter. If we can't get animals out of our our area, um, we'll be hunger, I guess, in winter, like not enough crops, not enough grass. 
and coming into winter because yeah. we can't get rid of it. Normally, we, if we have an empty ca- dairy cow, like yeah. she hasn't gotten calf, yeah, she'll go to the works. Uh, so people are going to carry probably 20% extra cattle as well, which they don't budget for in their grass budgets. What about your sheep and beef? Um, yeah, that's got the same issue. Uh, got half our lambs still on, which would go to the works as well. So overstocking. Um, got to push grass out in front of us for winter now. Um, personally, we're lucky we've got a few crops in. But, you know, we, the interest rates are going up and uh, the pressure's coming on in that department. So we need to get stock off to, to pay, pay the bills, basically. Can... Are you insure against what's happened? Were you insured? Is there any way to cover yourself for this sort of event? We're insured uh, with the milk. Yeah. Um, I hope. I mean, it's bloody hard to get hold of these insurance companies at the moment, but we did take out an insurance policy if it was a natural disaster kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and, Nick, mm. and, and I'd like to remind people, your property itself wasn't super adversely affected by this. I'm just thinking about someone who's sort of, you know, farming like you are and, and, you know, their land's been wiped out and they've lost stock in there. Oh, absolutely. My, my neighbour has lost over 300 lambs just on stock in, stuck in slips and the likes. Um, other, all my friends around me, sheep and beef farmers, their farms are, are totally rooted, um, lost half their land. So, you know, I don't know how they're going to survive. You hope that some grass will come in the slips again. But yeah. uh, there's all the fencing, all the infrastructure... Mm-hmm. With inflation the way it was, we were struggling as it is just to, to make ends meet. Mm. Now, on top of this, I don't know how we're going to go forward. But I'm yeah. sure we will. Yeah, well, we find a way. Nick, the other thing, mm. when Fonterra says they can't get a tanker to you, is that because of the roading or because of just everything being stuffed up? Uh, roading. We, we lost all our bridges up to here. Um, and then if they do get a bridge up, then it's going to take a lot of roading to get, to get a tanker safely up to us. So, so are you sort of cut off? Can you pop into town at the moment or pop down the shops? No, no, we haven't been. We've got no power. Week and a, week and a half, another three weeks to go, apparently. And no, we, we, yesterday I, I'm with the Volunteer Fire Brigade and we spent all day ferrying stuff across the little dinghy, uh, carrying them up a 30-metre bank and bringing them to um, our hubs of uh, Risington, Pato, and Pukatitri. And people come to our hubs and collect, collect their food, that kind of thing. God, it's like some post-apocalyptic bloody movie. It is, and the hillsides look like that. It's just just like that. Yeah. But yeah. The, the, the generosity, I tell you, is, is just incredible. It's, it's overwhelming. Um, it's, yeah, the supermarket you, at, at, at the local hall is just fantastic. So hats off to all the people in town. Now, and I wish they put their names on it because we don't know who to thank. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Nick, you sound incredibly... Star- Look, one other issue we've been talking about this morning, all these all these claims, rumours, um, you know, we've got the, the Minister of Police saying to gangs, now's not the time. We've got the Minister of Justice coming down even harder saying, cut it out. Are you hearing about looting and lawlessness, particularly gang-orientated in the area? Uh, we've had the Prime Minister say maybe it's not a big deal. Um what are you hearing on the grapevine about what's happening in terms of law and order in the wake of, of Gabriel? Um, I'm just hearing the same as you. I mean, we don't have much um, we don't have much communication here at the moment. But uh, you walk through town now, and, and uh, you don't even blink an eye when you see a gang member anymore. In the old days, you sort of were a bit shocked, but now it's becoming commonplace. Um, my wife's a teacher, and there are a lot of kids without. Um, uh, fathers, father figures, so they yeah. sort of cling to the gangs, and it's just quite sad on society. But yeah. but no one's turned like up. No one's turned up to nick your generator or nick your stuff. No, they can't get across the bridge. <laughs> That's why I made a stop and put a moat around you. Yeah, um, Nick, long term. So what do they do? Do they throw up a Bailey Bridge or, or what? Yeah, that's the talk. Yep, and the talk is it'll take forty ton, which will be a stock truck, and that. And that will be fantastic, but then the roads have to be good enough to take take the stock truck. Uh, we've got a little bridge in between here and our little township, and it would wouldn't take a truck at all right now. Wow! So you really are you're you're kind of isolated for the foreseeable future. Have you got kids, Nick? You got a family, or is it? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, I've got three kids. One runs the farm next door for me. The other one's about to go overseas. She's living with us at the moment. And she's worried about how to get out for her, her connecting flight. And the other one's living it up in Dunedin on O Week. Boy, <laughs> it's, a, it's a strange world we live in. Um, Nick, you don't sound... Uh, I mean this in the nicest possible way. You don't sound like you're whinging about it. But, hell, you're facing no. some adversity. Uh, honestly, the, the generosity, I mean, I haven't even been out the back. I'm too, I don't want to go out the back of our farm because I've spent uh, a lot of money and I don't want to see what's ruined, basically. Oh, man, so yeah. that's going to be a big day when you have to, oh, OK, I've got to look and see what's happened, yeah. Yeah, uh, all, yeah. all our plant, plantings and stuff. Yeah. Do you feel safe? And, and could I ask you also, do you feel like you had adequate warning that this was coming? That, that you, as much as you could for an event like this, you could get prepared uh, for it? Yeah, we knew a cyclone was coming, um, but no, no way of telling it was going to be this bad for us. Now, we, we can handle a lot of rain up here. This was quite different, and it honestly didn't feel too different to other yeah. rain events we've had. But yeah. I think, again, because we were so wet from the previous cyclone that the hillsides couldn't take any more moisture and, just, and fell off. Yeah. Uh, Nick, thank you for your time this morning. I'm sure you've got a, a ton to get on with, and we might check in with you uh, over the weeks ahead just to see how things are going. Um, uh, good on you. Um, yeah, any time. That'd be great. And good on your community for getting into it too. Thank you. That is Nick Dawson. He's a, a dairy farmer, and he's got some sheep and beef near Patoka outside of Napier. Um, basically cut off. Uh, basically has to turn his cows off. Uh, no prospect, uh, so his season, his milking season is over and I learned more about dairy farming in that short conversation than I knew beforehand. Um, and we're townies and we don't know how they work, but there's the deal. He's got to turn his cows off, he's got to take a whole lot of stuff to stop them getting sick. Fonterra just cannot, but good on Fonterra, they've given him some sort of income. The co-op has given him some sort of income guarantee. Uh, and literally he and his community uh, have got a dinghy that they're getting supplies in because there's no bridge. Just remarkable. And I'm sure uh, that Nick's story and Nick's situation is not uncommon. So when we think about the downstreams, it's not just what happens on TV news. It's people like the Dawsons. He's got a wee creek, Dawson's Creek. Um, uh, it's people like Nick doing it and his family doing it tough. But not complaining, not saying this is the result of climate change or post-colonisation um, or structural racism. They just say, oh, well, we get a generator and we turn the genie on and, and we get on with it. i got to say, it makes you bloody proud to be a New Zealander. Um, other thing too, in case you didn't know, if you've listened to Susanna Harper, our Kiwi in Paris, who we'll have back on soon, I think Nick's her uncle. There you go, it's a small country, isn't it?